Welcome, beautiful Aquarius, to your Abundance and Life Path report for February 2021. Aquarius, let's look at the overall energy coming into the reading. This is a stunning time in your life. The reading is one of the most significant that you will have this year and maybe for many years. We get the first card that comes in as your overarching energy is mermaid love. And when we look at this picture, we can see that the couple is very devoted to one another. She is in, operating in the earthly realm, and she is dependent upon her lover, her husband, the person who adores her to keep her safe in this environment. So for many of you, you could be in a very supportive relationship one of deep love, one of accepting differences, one of great intensity, while you receive a, an unusual kind of love returned from someone that is very special to you. For most of you, this would be a significant other, lover, you know, husband, boyfriend. But for some of you, it could also be signified by a really dear friend or somebody with a lot of wisdom who gives you a lot of support. The next card is listen. You are being requested. You're, you're asked by the universe at this time to become very quiet, to listen to the hoof beats and the off in the distance. This is a very empathic time for you to listen to your intuition, to listen to your inner your inner messages, things that come to you in dreams or just randomly throughout the day. Everything is connected, and that is why Spirit is calling on you to listen so carefully, to give and re receive support so willingly. And we have Miss Sunshine. So the outcome at this time, Spirit is asking you to be brave like the sun. Come out, you know, show yourself. Be willing to exhibit or show the world who you are. Be courageous. Be brave and be bold like the sun. And that is actually your seventh house. You just experienced a full moon in Leo in your seventh house. So, it's a beautiful time for you to really vibe with the warmth, with the happiness. Um, you know, other people are looking at you very favorably at this time. This dynamic is going to be felt for at least six months by you. On your journey we get the card flying. You are flying high right now. Spirit is giving you wings so that you can get a different perspective when you look at what's underneath you. Don't be afraid to take off. Don't be afraid, you know, to, to fly high, to dream big, to feel as though you can accomplish anything because Spirit is saying it's preparing you by giving you the wings to do so. The prayer card is an archetypical energy, and it's asking you not to be religious in the traditional sense, but to have gratitude every single day for everything that's beautiful around you, to appreciate the view, the ride, so to speak, in your life, no matter what the situation, to find reason to give thanks to the people you love, the job that you have and may love or may not have. Have, but anything that gives you security, anything that helps you stay grounded, the snow that's beautiful, the plants that are gorgeous, you know, everything that you have in which you could give thanks is, you know, spirit is calling on you to do that so that you can bring more abundance into your life, but more so, so that you can enjoy the abundance you have now, as well as attract more. The ancients and the ancestors are asking you to embrace the energy of peace. This is a card of the broken arrow. Do not have conflict with people. Really just be 
very positive in the way that you go forward. If you have a disagreement with someone, there's no reason for it to become a negative energy. The Oracle, wait for important information. It is coming to you in the near future. So let's look at your astrology and your tarot scope. This is the first in the seventh house, the second in the eighth, the third and the ninth, the fourth and the tenth, the fifth and the eleventh and the 6th and the 12th. And I pair them that way because they play off of each other in astrology and it becomes much more simple to understand the dynamic of what's happening when you look at the axis of energy. So when we see the 1st house and the 7th house, we see you and then we see your partner. We see your partner's feelings about things and we see your personal feelings. So what we have here, this is a time when your ships are coming in. Aquarius, the three of fire, moving forward, steering your ship through action into a glorious time. She's wearing this gorgeous mask, traveling in a gorgeous boat. So there is something very creative with this Leo full moon that you probably have written because we have the page of air. The page of air is the energy of the air signs. It's the gift of words, the gift of gab. It's also your partner watching you very intently, supporting you very intently in your effort to move forward with your dreams and your hopes. Right now, Aquarius, happy birthday. You have the sun in Aquarius, which is your, your life force. Your partner is watching you. Uh, and for those of you who are not in a specific relationship, the people who are supportive around you that act as partners for you in life to give you support are watching you with great clarity. They're over here with these giant angel wings going, go Aquarius, go, you can launch, you can take, you can take to the air. You have this beautiful horse with wings. We have Mercury. You've never been sharper. Mercury in Aquarius is genius pure genius. Mercury in Aquarius is about forward thinking, thinking outside the box, thinking about the next hundred years instead of the past hundred years. You are very grounded right now. Whatever you are doing right now and manifesting is going to set you up for success over the next three turns of Saturn. So when Saturn goes into your 10th house, Aquarius, what we're seeing here is uh, the equivalent to becoming an authority in your field. Jupiter, the planet of good luck, Sagittarius, ninth house. This again with Mercury, third house, ninth house. This is a communication. This is actually writing a paper. This is sitting down at your desk. This is local travel. It's day-to-day -day life. And this is loftier thought. Jupiter is ruled, you know, ruled Sagittarius. And so we see you in this time in your life when you are probably creating something in writing that is a different way of thinking. It's mercurial, it's genius in Aquarius, Jupiter in Aquarius. It really speaks to, speaks volumes to how benefic this energy is because it naturally rules the 11th house of the greater good of all. So when we look at the 11th house, we are looking at the collective, what's good for the collective in your associations. But this really deems that you are going to have some new friendships coming into your life that are going to be with you for many years. It is a time in your life of immense growth. Enjoy it, embrace it, appreciate it, and be bold. In your money house, we have investments for you. We have 
the seven of earth and the seven of earth in the second house means that you absolutely want stability. You want to have a time in your life and you don't know with Neptune and Pisces here exactly how to achieve that. It does look like sometimes your finances seem nebulous or they seem to be confusing to you. But what I also get is there's going to be a release of debt for many of you. Uh, some sort of debt may be forgiven, especially if you have student loans or something of that nature. I'm really getting this very spiritual energy, laws of attraction kind of thinking that you have about money right now, and it's going to help you manifest. Your partner is coming in here, your eighth house energy, other people's money, your partner's money, uh, money that could come from banks or loans or, you know, an inheritance. But the Eight of Coins basically says that you are earning your inheritance. Your partner is very stable. They're here to support you. You're on the same page from the Seven of Earth to the Eight of Earth, Pentacles, Coins. The two of you are mano y mano. You're walking lockstep in terms of what you think that you should spend money on, what you should invest in. It's a beautiful energy. Your person is very much in um, serving the partnership right now. They're very invested in making your partnership stable as you go on about your business of creativity right now. The third house, again, this is this energy of the Gemini, Mercury energy, enlightened thinking is going to bring you money. So the third house is where you live. You may upgrade your home in the near future. The Ace of Earth is a new beginning. It is your local neighborhood. It really speaks to the fact that, you know, and here we have Earth of Water. Now we have love of, you know, not not only your neighborhood, but the powers that be in the world, the energetic, uh, say, university, some university may decide to pick up um, some creative work that you're doing and ask you to teach, uh, to teach something that you love to uh, you're bringing love you have new love in your ninth house of of you know the hierophant you know when we look at codified thought sagittarius the enlightenment you are bringing to your ninth house is felt by many as a very beautiful time of you showing love bringing love into the way that we think as a collective. The ninth house, again, universities, a higher level of thinking, philosophy, religious beliefs. So you're really learning almost, you're almost saying the prayer of love is the answer, not some sort of institution. So you're softening the idea that we have of institutions. You're, you're bringing into uh, your creative realm something that is going to change the thought process of the collective and you're going to earn money. Again, this could be writing. This is publishing. This is writing. So when we look at your fourth house now, we have nine of air. So your fourth house, where you live, is of great concern to you right now. Uh, part of you wants to worry about it. Uh, you may have actually, you may get notification. Say if you're a renter, you may have this sort of Uranus, very surprise situation in which you decide to move or relocate, uh, you're prepared for it. When we look at Uranus again, where you live is inspiring to you. It is Aquarius energy with this energy here. But we also see that it looks as though with Taurus, you may need more room, physical room, to, to work at home. And the Ten of Air says that your, your significant other is looking at this like, oh man, I don't know that we should do that. I don't know if we could do that right now. So they look as though they're not so 
on board with it but both of you are being very cautious so whether or not you're looking at you know what's going on in terms of moving uh, your your partner feels as though you should wait for your career to be bolstered. I also see the chance that for some of you, you may have a, you may end something in your career uh, that you, you're really, you know, you're tired. It might, it might feel like it's really time to move on. So that will be in flux. I don't see any, you know, tremendous activity. It would be slowly over the coming years with Uranus and Taurus that you may change your career. It would be very rare for you to lose that at this time. Um, so it does look like you're stable here. I like that energy for you. When we look at your fifth house of romance, we see balance, Gemini energy here, that it is very important for you in romance to have someone who is communicative. So if you have a Gemini in your life, Aquarius, it really means that that person helps bring balance to you, but you're also bringing balance to your own idea of what's romantic and what is what feeds your heart, what feeds your soul. When we look at your partner in terms of their romance, they're sort of holding their breath, they're watching you. This is Aquarius energy. They're watching you. They're watching over you. They want to protect you. When we look at this handsome king of air it's sort of like the the surgical you know we look at the king of air it's he's holding a sword this is a king of swords and many think of the the king of swords as as ominous or somebody who's harsh but truly the king of swords is all about that intellectual capacity to remove emotions from decision making and in a very healthy way such as the king of swords is oftentimes as an engineer, somebody who doesn't get so emotional, they throw the computer out the window. It could be somebody who is in a job that requires like a surgeon. There's no crying in surgery, and yet this person could be a very healing entity in your life, and that's what I'm seeing. I'm seeing that for most of you, you have a lot of intellectual people around you right now in this beautiful, almost like um, environment at a university, or that, that thinking, that very upscale thinking of telling you the absolute truth, giving you the truth, helping guide you into your future. We have the energy every day, day to day. You are the high priestess. Your intuition is off the charts right now. You are very emotional. Sometimes I feel as though when you're creating or you're doing your daily work that, you know, with this Cancerian energy on that cusp, I feel like you could be very emotional. But given the full moon in uh, Leo, I see it as a very creative time protect cancerian energy protects the egg so whatever creative uh ideas whatever your creative works are you'll be very protective of them and you'll be very wise in terms of how to do that the 12th house energy that's hidden for you right now is venus is moving now soon from capricorn into aquarius so that influences changing and pluto right now your 12th house, everything that's hidden in your life is something that you're purging. You are purging any burdens that you've had from the past. You are moving into an absolutely vibrant, it's almost like you're you're bursting out of an egg, you know, you're bursting out of a big egg uh, in the eagle's nest, really with this beautiful high level of thought and intuition. Whatever you are creating in your life is going to carry you for many years into abundance, into wealth, and it is transformative. Aquarius, I hope if you like this message, you'll take the time to like, subscribe, share, enter the contest. Sending you love from Chicago. Thanks so much for joining me. Hope to see you soon in another video. Take care. Sending you love from Chicago since I'm back. And tell me where you're from, Aquarius.